As you can see, I am wearing merch in this video, which is so exciting. It's got Evie and me all over the back. It's very fun and comfy and cute. But I film a month ahead and I know I said all these launch videos and if a launch video hasn't happened and all that kind of stuff, there's a reason for that. And it is because I hit a snag with the merch. Some of it uh, didn't react well in a washing machine and I'm not going to sell you guys merch that will get damaged when you just wash it on cold. So I'll make a whole video explaining it by now. Definitely it will have happened by now. Like if I don't, you'll probably already understand. But if you're confused as to why I'm wearing merch <laughs> and you guys can't buy the merch yet, that is why. Because hoodies haven't been damaged. It's a whole thing. So sorry, but look, I'm so excited about it. Ayo. Ayo. Welcome back to Every Disney Movie Ever. My name is Jess and I'm watching Every Disney Movie Ever. Today I'm going to talk about Air Bud. Air Bud is a 1997 theatrical release. It is directed by Charles Martin Smith, cinematography by Mike Southen, editing by Allison Grace, music by Bram Wenger, and it's written by Paul Tamasey and Aaron Mendelson. Charles Martin Smith, I covered in the video about Herbie Goes Bananas. The link will be in the description. Mike Southen is best known for Replicant, Snow White, A Tale of Terror, Guns N' Roses, November Rain, and Bandito. Allison Grace is best known for Moonstruck, Double Happiness, The Lotus Eaters, and Intelligence. Bram Wenger is best known for Hollow Point, The Search for Santa Claus, Mac and Moxie, and The Duke. Paul Tamasey is best known for The Fighter, Patriot's Day, Walking Across Egypt, and The Finest Hours. Aaron Mendelsohn is best known for The Twelve Dates of Christmas, Like Cats and Dogs, A Change of Heart, and this. The film stars Kevin Zegers, Wendy McKenna, Michael Jeter, Bill Cobbs, and Buddy the Dog. Kevin Zegers plays Josh and is best known for Transamerica, Dirty John, Fear the Walking Dead, and Dawn of the Dead. Wendy McKenna plays Jackie and is best known for Sister Act 1 and 2, State of Play, and this. Michael Jeter plays Norm and is best known for The Green Mile, Open Range, Evening Shade, and Jurassic Park 3. Bill Cobbs plays Arthur and is best known for Demolition Man, That Thing You Do, Oz the Great and Powerful, and The People Under the Stairs. Buddy the Dog plays Buddy slash Airbud. The film had a $3 million budget and made $27.7 million in the box office, which is very good for the movie. It's not a great box office score at this time, but it's really good for the movie. The movie made you know, seven times its budget, which means it definitely made a profit, and that's all that really matters for Airbud in the grand scheme of things. It has a 45% on Rotten Tomatoes. It has one theatrical sequel, three direct video sequels, and a spin-off series called Buddies, which are supposed to be buddies, puppies, basically. I loved this movie when I was a kid. I was three or four years old when it came out, and I had a fat crush on Josh and then I was just obsessed with Buddy. I wanted a dog like that. I was just so obsessed with this movie. I loved it so much. I am convinced it's the reason I don't like clowns. Like I've never been afraid of clowns. I've never been like, oh my god, clowns scare me because of like it and stuff like that. I've just always never liked clowns and I'm convinced now having watched this that this is the movie that did that because I just associated clowns with being abusive toward dogs and being like really bad people actually. So I just had a very poor opinion of clowns my whole life. And now I'm pretty sure I know the source of that is this movie, which is crazy. I hadn't seen this movie in a really long time, at least all the way through. I feel like I caught pieces of it a few years ago and I was like, oh, this movie is so good. And I do stand by that. I love this movie a lot, but I think it is so interesting to watch it now as an adult and notice the things you definitely aren't privy to or noticing when you're a kid. Like, I was much more sympathetic to the mother's storyline in this film than I ever would have been when I was little. When I was little, it was all about Josh and Buddy. I didn't care really what was going on around. And now that I'm an adult, she is a single mother who just lost her husband. A oh, well, a year ago, lost her husband. She has a new job. She bought that house. Heck yes, girl. She's remodeling that house by herself. And she's dealing with her children, trying to like overcome the death of their father. Like she's dealing with a lot and my heart goes out to her. And then just like her own heartbreak when Norm comes to get the dog back, she is herself heartbroken. Like it's just because she sees how much Buddy has like helped Josh get over his dad and like his dad's death, not get over his dad. <laughs> And, like move on and join basketball again and just find happiness and so like it, I was just much more in tune and emotional and following along with her storyline just as much as Josh's. 
I also think this film is really cinematic for a $3 million budget throwaway live action movie from Disney. I think Charles Martin Smith, um, for those of you who don't know, he starred in Never Cry Wolf, which was a film I covered a while ago that is very cinematic and very like not the normal Disney movie. Like, I feel like if it hadn't come out when it did and it came out today and kind of sort of maybe not under the Disney banner, it would have been nominated for Oscars. Like, Never Cry Wolf was very mature I don't even know what to say it was just very um artsy for lack of a better word it was very much like you decide what's going on in the story kind of and you're just there to experience it and I feel like that way of storytelling affected Charles Martin Smith who was the star in that film and he kind of was like I even though it's like a kids movie I still want it to be really cinematic and I love when that happens because there were so many shots that just helped tell the story in this film compared to just your basic close up, medium close up, establishing shot. Like he showed insert shots of like boots stepping up onto things and like setting things up, close ups of hands and like all that kind of stuff, which can sometimes not be in the coverage. And I'm really, really happy that Charles Martin Smith went the extra mile and got that coverage even though he was working with kids and animals. Like that's a hard job. And, um, Michael South and Mike South and also like obviously he's a cinematographer so he's also a huge factor in that so I'm just like really pleased that Charles Martin Smith and Mike South and decided to make it a little bit more cinematic regardless of if it was for kids or not and I think the film accomplishes what it's trying to do I cried there is a parent death as I've said now and <laughs> it's also funny watching as an adult because you notice things like when Buddy comes down and messes up that entire room she's redoing, like the wallpaper and the paint and all that, she just got home from work, and then Buddy goes in that room and causes havoc, and the paint cans were open? And I was like, no, no. You can't leave paint cans open, because the paint will dry. Paint will dry out and be no good. So if she was at work all day, those paint cans most certainly were not open in that room. So that scene is a little bit like of a plot hole, like there's no way he could have caused at least the paint splattering everywhere havoc. He could have definitely knocked everything down, which would have been havoc. But there's no way those paint cans would have been open, so I think it's funny to notice that kind of stuff. Um, what person hits an animal crate in the middle of the road and doesn't get out to make sure they haven't just killed an animal in a crate? They do that right at the beginning of the movie, and I was like, excuse me? <laughs> like, if I hit an animal crate, I'd be out of my mind. I would have been jumping out that car like, did I just kill a cute little animal? Oh my goodness, I can't handle this. So unbelievable, I couldn't believe that part. Um, the music is also so good. I'm so obsessed with just some of the technical storytelling aspects of this. Um, oh, the abusive coach, that's what I wanted to talk about. So the first coach of the basketball team is abusive and I really, really love how they kind of tease that and plant the seed that he might not be the nicest. Because obviously you know he's not nice because he's like favorite playing favorites and he like doesn't even give Josh a chance to try out so he just makes him the manager. And then when it does come time for Josh to try out, he's like, oh, I guess. And then it's blown away by Josh's talent. And then during the scene when Josh is finally on the team and that one kid misses up the ball to catch it, the looks exchanged between the coach and that kid, you can see the fear in the kid, you can see the quiet infuriation in the coach and the way that that was edited together and shot was so well done that you just know something's not right and that kid is afraid of his coach more than like a healthy afraid of being yelled at like he's afraid and so then when buddy goes and finds him like abusing the kid by throwing the basketballs at him and making him bleed and stuff it's that much more like oh this is what's going on and like i really loved that i love the teasing of that i love the foreshadowing of that i was really into that little peek and then a dog playing isn't against the rules, and I was laughing at that this time because, like, of course, a dog playing isn't in the rule book because no one in their right mind ever thought a dog would play basketball. So, like, they get around that with a loophole because, like, who would put 
in the rule book only humans are allowed to play basketball. Like no one would put that in the rule book. So that made me giggle. That's everything I have for Airbud. It is cheesy, but it is still a classic in my mind. My final rating is six basketballs out of 10. Our total movie count is. Our parent death toll is. Our cry count is. <laughs> If you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put up videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join my Patreon. There's some fun bonus stuff going on over there. Always go check that out because they get coupon codes to merch. Some tiers get free merch. You get bonus content. You get all of that fun stuff. Buy merch, maybe? I don't know if we're still having issues or not, but I hope I can put buy merch and there's a link and I hope it's all good and because I'll be really sad if it isn't. <laughs> um, until next time, come on, subscribe, and I'm going to show you are so you do it, and don't be norm about it 100%. I'm just like, I love this color, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed.